Hey everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Hope everybody's having an unbelievable day. Uh, it's Saturday and I'm actually leaving the office. About to make a couple of stops and then make a move to the house. Look. Don't forget that we are still pushing and pressing to raise funds for the Black Men Lead Rite of Passage Initiative and the wraparound services we offer to black males up to the age of 30 and in many cases beyond, including mental health resources, job training, skills training, uh, and more. We need to make this a national resource. We need to make the Rite of Passage a universal standard of manhood and the training, a universal training process for black manhood in America. We have to properly socialize young black males if we expect them to perform in a way that's conducive to a growing and prosperous community. We can talk and complain all day long about what's going wrong, but until we take some actionable measures to change things, uh, it's it's for nothing and it's it's a sign of weakness and hopelessness. We don't need to complain. We need to take action And so there's a link in the description box that you can click and show love if you follow me in the stretch of time You know that this isn't new. We haven't just started something here. We've been going strong hard in the paint for years uh, oh, well over a decade just on what we've done on social media uh, the books, the lectures, the research, the program development, the access to the community for uh, the things that are going on that they need help for. We've been doing that for decades. And so we are asking for your support. Uh, this stuff isn't uh, free. Changing things isn't free. Addressing problems isn't free. It costs. And we've been going and we have not stopped. But I'm telling you, we need to be more united in how we flow and how we move. And it needs to be a universal uh, process. Uh, on that note, I'm going to move on to what I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you on a more intimate and informative, but yet still informative level. Uh, being a person who is an expert in the area of behavioral science, uh, I tend to observe and view things a little differently than the average person or a person whose expertise is in another area. I don't just look at what people are doing, I look for causality, I look for what is driving it, what's going on, why does this person do this, why does that group do this, why is it that way, there's no such thing as a coincidence, there's no such thing as it's just happening. Um, and one of the reasons why I don't allow my kids to to respond to any question when I don't know, then the first thing we must do is discover why. You know what? But in 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 this natural practice and development of this idea of understanding and recognizing patterns of behavior, shifts in patterns, and so forth, I tend to recognize things that people don't recognize. And a pattern I see now is the way. Uh, the amplification of the commodification of black men and what that means, <coughs> excuse me, and what that means for the black collective. When I say commodification, what do I mean? I mean that when we start to completely define manhood based on bank account, when we completely start to define manhood based on what a man can do financially without observing the other responsibilities and areas of strength of manhood where one might excel at a greater level than they do in finance. Now, let me first and foremost say that I'm a, I am a firm believer and an advocate of a man being able to be a provider financially. It, and when I say provider, it doesn't necessarily mean he pays all the bills, and I'm going to get to that in a minute, but he should have a desire to, and he should be working toward it. And it should be his goal. Now, if he's with the right woman and he has a desire to pay all the bills and she knows how to connect and get behind him and support him, he'll get there. Because if he's if he loves her and he's committed, he's going to put in the work. And if you put in the work and you go after something and you're relentlessly going after it and it's a passion and it is a priority to you, you get it. 
we don't get things because we don't go after them. We don't commit to them. We don't, we don't, we don't sell out for them. And so we balk when it gets hard, when it gets difficult. We like to settle for comfort. What I'm telling you is if a man has a desire to be the sole provider, at some point he will be. But it doesn't mean that at that point when he's not, that he is somehow not a man. And I'm going to get to that. I, I, I define manhood in my series, uh, the three, uh, the, the five P's of black manhood. I, I, I define those P's that have to be present in order to be, be, you know, to be defined as a man. One of them is a provider, but I define specifically how that looks. The problem is when you sit up and the only thing you focus on is how much he can do financially. You lose sight of number one is his other responsibilities. Uh, and why is this important? Because what happens is you got a bunch of men who are quote unquote financially sweet or financially in a good spot that are horrible men. Why? Because they believe that their financial status has provided them carte blanche in how they move and operate with females. Why? I, 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 what's, what's the term floating around now? I'm a high value man. I'm a high value man because I got paper. No, it takes a whole lot more than in having the bag to be a high value man. The problem is that women aren't holding men to a high standard. Most women have bought into the fact. For, and, and, and you see it all the time. I collect data consistently on a weekly ba basis and social media makes it so easy to collect data now. And you can almost you can type one post and collect a bunch of data if it goes viral just by sitting there. And it's 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 a form of study. You literally can collect it. You can analyze it. You can break it down and you can put it into categories. You can do all those things that allow you to see things from a number of different perspectives from people who are contributing primarily based on how they really feel because they have no idea that they're being studied. Well, how many posts do I see on a regular basis? Well, if your man got you paying half the bills, blah, 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 blah. And my whole thing is, what's the circumstance? Where are you trying to go? What are you trying to do? Now, if you're living a, uh, a lean lifestyle, let's say your household operates under a budget under $50,000, Maybe you got a point. Maybe your man needs to be paying all the bills. Maybe your man should at least have the capacity to pay all the bills. If y'all decide to do it 50-50, that's a personal choice. But maybe, but now for the women that are out there saying they want this, 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 and this, and this, now what you're doing is you're putting a strainer and a stressor on a man to be able to give you a lifestyle that actually most women don't live. Number one is I can tell you the percentage of people who earn six figures. It's not high. So all the people who are claiming to live six figure lifestyles are lying. So you got a bunch of people on social media pretending to be something they're not. And a bunch of other people trying to demand something that will allow them to live that same lifestyle without understanding that most people aren't and what it takes to get there. So if you want a hundred thousand dollar or six figure, you know, two hundred thousand dollar, three hundred thousand dollar lifestyle, how much are you bringing to it? And if you're expecting a man to do all of that, then you got a couple of choices. You can find somebody who's capable of doing it. You can find somebody who's going to... Here's the problem. When you find a man that's already there, well, he's got the ability to support and sustain a family on a $300,000 budget or higher, he comes with his own set of demands. Now, he's going to give that to you, but what are you bringing to the table that's going to offset that? And I'm not talking about it in the derogatory manner. I'm talking about it. A guy like that, it wants an equal. That's what you don't understand. A bunch of women want to be kept. Most men who keep women don't treat them right. Most men, most men who come in and all they're doing is taking care of a woman who is eye candy and a trophy, normally mishandle them. And I'm telling you from my studies, I deal with families, I deal with couples counseling, I deal when a woman, when a woman. Now I'm not talking about a woman that's taking care of the kids and doing all this stuff like that's a full time job. I'm talking about somebody that's being cute. The kids aren't here yet, and 
she just looks good. She's good to take to the, the, the corporate dinners and, and all the other things where he can show the people what he's able to land, you know, from a look perspective. From a look perspective, she's looking good and, and everything like that. But a man wants to equal, a man wants to be able to exchange ideas. A man wants to be able to have somebody that he can look at and see in some ways, maybe not in income, but in drive and in, in destiny and in so many other ways that are truly going to matter to him. She can be a part of his destiny. She can be a part of his vision. He can plug into her passion, her vision. He can see how they're going to be mutually beneficial to one another. Hey, I'll bring the money to the table. You you, you bring the support. You bring the peace. You bring the encouragement. You you bring the, hey, I'm going to help you with this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold you down here. You bring that to the table. We got something. But when you sit up, here's the problem. When you sit up and you completely commodify a person. You don't demand that he bring all the other peas to the table. He needs to be a priest. What does that mean? He needs to be a direct connection and advocate between you and the divine, the most high, however you view God. This isn't about anyone religious. This is about understanding your source. You, you have to understand your source and your man needs to be a priest. And the priest is the one that brings the connectivity between those that he is covering and the divine source. God life, the universe, whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter to me. It's all semantics because at the end of the day, there's a source. What you call it really doesn't change what it is. So don't get dogmatic in that. Get 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 a, get an understanding of what's going on here and understand that it doesn't matter what you call it. You got to understand that it exists and you got to know how to move with it. And a man who is really truly ready to lead his family understands how to move with it. He understands his importance. He's also a prophet, not in the sense of being able to predict the future, but in, in the ability to be able to speak and establish the future, to be able to establish to his daughters how beautiful they are, to be able to establish to his sons how powerful they can be in business ownership and how uh, powerful they can be in protecting and covering the women in their lives to be able to hold his wife in a place of comfort and position and here's the important thing women those of you specifically who have for the most of your life had to carry the load by yourself You've been single mothers, you've been head of households, you've had to do it in a way that it was never designed and meant for you to do. You have mastered it to a point that, you know, most people from the outside look at it and think it's easy, but you know how hard it is. You know how the struggle is. Uh, in many cases, uh, the man in your life or the men in your life thought it would be an acceptable course of action to procreate with you and abandon their progeny for you to raise. And many times they have uh, considered it to be uh, okay to physically and emotionally abuse you. And, and in many instances, they have never come back and made good on that. For, so all of you who fall into this category, I personally apologize on behalf of the men because you're probably never going to get that apology that you're looking for. Now, let's talk about something that you guys need to work on. Once a man steps into your life, once a man says he's willing to assume the responsibility, especially when he's stepping into a situation where he's coming in to rear another man's kids, when he's coming in to basically clean up with another man trashed up, you can't take the same mindset that you've been fighting with the whole time. You can't take that survival mode in because what you'll find yourself doing is creating problems that don't exist and missing what he's actually doing. You don't even recognize his presence because why? You're still so used to having to be the source that you're creating situations in which you can sit up and say, look at all this stuff I'm having to do, even when it's not necessary. When you can look at it and say, okay, do I really have to do this? No. And, and, and the answer is no, I'm doing it. And, I, and I've literally sold myself on the idea, look at what I've got to do. When the truth of the matter, you don't have to do it, you need to stop. You need to stop. You need to look at yourselves and ask yourself, is this something I really have to do or is this something I'm doing because I'm so used to grinding, I'm so used to being that person. I don't know anything but struggle. I don't know anything but doubling down. I don't know anything but three job. And I don't know. So I'm out here doing it despite the fact that this guy's over here and he's carrying, if not all the load, much of the load. And I don't even recognize it. I, I can see it and I cannot, but I'm still behaving as if he's not. I'm still behaving as if he's not coming to the table and going hard in the paint for me. You've got to stop that. 
you got to recognize if a man is like that, he's not just coming with the goods as far as money is concerned. He's coming with the goods. He cares about you. He wants to know you're okay. He asks you a lot of times, how are you doing? What's going on? Are you okay? He's not trying to, uh, he's not trying to, uh, be all in your business. He's not trying to control you. He's concerned. That's what he does. He wants to know you're okay. And if you tell him something, he's probably going to try to fix it. Even if you ain't that, you come home and tell him, hey, man, this happened. He's going to be, that's what we do. So when we're asking questions, we're caring. You got to be careful of how you handle that man because he's there to do some good in your life. But you're so used to the bad that you can't recognize it. You're so used to the bad that you will find what's wrong with him instead of acknowledging what's good. Because the thing is, whatever you look for, you find. There's absolutely no person on this planet that's perfect. There's no person on this planet that's got it all together. That's bull crap. That's the narrative that's playing. That's what they want everybody to believe. The truth of the matter is that that's not the case. That is not how things work. So what am I getting at here? Men, we need to be in a place where we are doing everything we should be. That's first. And we need to develop an understanding of what that means. What am I supposed to do? That's what Black Man Lead is all about. Black Man Lead is about actually developing an understanding of what it means to be a man and then teaching it in a systematic way to where all young boys are learning what black manhood entails. We've got to do that. That's why it's so important that we properly socialize young black males. We've got too many definitions of what manhood is. And so everybody's locking into what they feel works for them best. And nobody's hitting the mark because nobody understands where the mark is. Ladies, stop being sold on things that are unrealistic and start working with somebody that's willing to work with you. Start building with someone who's willing to build with you. When a guy shows up, especially my sisters that come with ready-made families, I'm a part of a blended family. I love all of my kids, uh, and I don't call them step kids. I call them my kids. I love all of my kids, and I love my wife. So I can talk about this because that's always been me. My grandmother taught me uh, as a young boy. She told me, when you take on a woman who has a child, if you're not prepared to father that child, don't take the woman. And my grandmother was a good to do that because she reared my grandfather's children. So she, 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 she showed me what was going to be necessary. We're in a situation where there are far too many people out there where the kids don't have someone one way or another. And people are going to be stepping in that. There, there are too many divorces out there where kids are having mothers and fathers break up. And so that has to be something that we are aware of but when that happens you gotta understand the level of commitment it takes for a man to do that you gotta understand the level of love it takes for a man to do that and when he loves your kids like his own when he cuts and goes hard in the paint for your children like his own understand what he's doing and receive him for who he is don't look for the bad because of what you've had in the past look for the good what you focus on you feel I'm going to leave it on that note, and I'm going to get out of here. What I want you to understand is there's work to be done. Again, I'm going to ask you to support the work that we are already doing so that we can do more work. The link is in the description box, or you can give directly through our Cash App handle. But at the, bottom, at the end of the day, there's work that needs to be done. On that note, I am out of here.